as tough as 2020 has been, we've made it this far. So in the spirit of Thanksgiving and the holidays, I want to tell you five things that developers should be thankful for this year. So 2020 has absolutely been, uh, probably for most of us, one of the most difficult years that we've been through. But at the end of the day, we've made it this far. We're almost to 2021. We'll get to reset. We'll get to look forward to whatever 2021 20, has to bring. Hopefully, it's all good things, but I guess we'll wait and see. But before we do that, before we move on to quickly and kind of shut out 2020, I think there's a little bit of time maybe to reflect on things from a developer's perspective that we can be thankful for in 2020. So let's go ahead and kick off this list with the first thing that you should be thankful for in 2020, which is just the community and especially the web developer community. And community can mean lots of different things to you. For me personally, community means being active on Twitter. It means the discords and I run a learn, build, teach discord uh, link below to that. That has been great. It's really cool to see people kind of like rally around each other, answer questions for each other, be a part of each other's learning journey and kind of building things journey is really, really cool. Again, Twitter, just sharing stuff with people there, the amount of knowledge that I like take in from other people and the inspiration that I get from Twitter is really incredible. It's kind of like, you never really think of Twitter just being kind of like just regular social media as being very practical, but it's extremely practical. Like that's where I learn the majority of things uh, or a lot of the things that I know, and especially a lot of the topics that I then go and research myself. And then we get into the kind of like what would have been the in-person community, which is uh, meetups and conferences. And the cool thing, although it's kind of sad as well, but one of the upsides about COVID, unfortunately, is now we've gotten to be able to interact with people all over the world more so than we would have in the past. We've always had the ability to, to jump on a Zoom call. We've always had the ability to FaceTime our friends, but now we've done it more. Like I've FaceTimed my friends that I hadn't seen in a long time, more than I ever had in the previous couple of years. Also, uh, the meetups that I would have attended in person, now like the Code Connector meetups here in Memphis, now they're open to the community. Now other people can join. So I've gotten to meet people from around the world. I've gotten to bring people on my Twitch channel that I just literally know through Twitter. So I get to meet them for the first time. We've become friends. We talk on Twitter a lot more. We share content, all that sort of stuff. It's really cool. And then uh, with the um, with the conference side, like I would have been traveling and speaking at conferences, which is an amazing experience, by the way. The community around conferences that way is really cool. But also now we get access to a lot of virtual ones. A lot of them have also become free, so they're more accessible for a lot of people. So the first thing that you should be thankful for this, this Thanksgiving or these holidays in 2020 is absolutely the community because it's amazing. There are its ups and downs, but for the most part, it's very supportive, collaborative, and I am uh, just excited to be a part of the different communities that I am in. All right, the second thing that you should be thankful for is developer tooling. And honestly, I could probably just call this section like VS Code because VS Code is so amazing in so many ways that like just reflect back on how cool VS Code is, how many amazing features they shipped over the couple, last couple of years, how many different extensions there are, how many different uses there are for VS Code. It's absolutely amazing. So that would be maybe in this broader list of developer tools, like tool number one for me is VS Code because it's freaking amazing. But there's also like all of these other tools that we use on a day-to-day -day basis that like development probably wouldn't be the same without them. And a couple that we've already mentioned a little bit in terms of community is Slack and Discord. And you see so many companies, so many communities, so many content creators are now building communities using these tools. Like they wouldn't have been able to do this had they not had things like Slack and Discord. So like, that's a tool I think that maybe we kind of take for granted uh, its impact, like it's, it's, its ability to send messages and, and like have people in community, but it really like actually builds that community. And you'll see new technologies or new or companies with new technologies, they build these groups, these servers intentionally to keep to like have people be involved and have them be a part of the process and get feedback and that sort of stuff. So Slack and Discord are great. Uh, one of the ones I just used recently was CodePen, like just the ability to have uh, a piece of code and be able to share it broadly for anyone in the world, but not only just share it, like we could do that with GitHub, but also to be able to like see it and interact with it in the browser. Like how cool is that? And then uh, CodePen has added so many features and and languages and, and preprocessors and things that it supports. It's just, that's a really cool idea uh, to have that, to be able to leverage and share with other people. And the last one, these are just a few random ones, but uh, the GitHub CLI came out this year. So this gives us command line tools to interact with GitHub, to create repos and uh, and do all the, the sort of things that we would uh, typically do inside of like github.com. Now we can do that from our terminal. So I'm curious, uh, let me know what like what are your favorite tools or what are your favorite features of tools that came out this year? Uh, let me know in the comments below. But in general, 
like we should be appreciative of the tooling that we have as developers because it makes not only our job, but also our community so much better and so much more powerful than it would have been without them. All right, next up on the list, the third thing that you should be uh, thankful for as a developer is content creators. And this is obviously a pretty personal one for me. I am a content creator. I'm not selfishly asking you to, to like the video, comment on the video, blah, blah, blah. Although if you did, it's nice. But like, think about how much free and paid content is out there. Like there's so many different content creators and I work with a lot of them or talk to a lot of them and collaborate with a lot of them in this uh, Discord server that I'm in. And, and these people are so incredible. Like they have they have all of this knowledge and they're ready to give you a lot of it in like YouTube and blogs and things like that. So just appreciate how much free content there is out there and appreciate the time and effort that content creators put in. Me personally, like my wife goes to work early in the morning. She leaves at 6.30. So before I start my day, I've got some time, right, to create content. And it's just kind of time to myself. And it happens to be something that I really enjoy. And other people are, they may not have like that amount of time. They may be staying up late to do this sort of stuff. So just content creators in general, be thankful for the stuff that they're able to put out. Be thankful for the things that you're able to learn from them. Show them support by, if you watch a video, if you read an article, uh, like whatever the, the, the liking mechanism is on that platform, give it a like, leave a comment to say, I appreciate your time. I appreciate your content. And just be supportive of them because it's not an easy thing to do. It is a fun thing to do from our perspective. And I think that we really enjoy it. But it, I can't tell you how special it is. Every comment I read that's, oh, this video helped. Thank you so much for your video. I appreciate your content. That stuff goes a long way. So pick out any video or any article that you watch over a read over the next couple of weeks. Just be intentionally thankful and be intentional in telling that person thank you for the content that they put out because content creators are amazing. And like, I wouldn't be where I am without content creators in the sense of like me being able to learn from them. All right. So the fourth thing to be thankful for here is just learning opportunities. And we've talked about content creators, right? We talked about like free YouTube content or free articles, but there's also like all of these other things going on too. Uh, one is free code camp, right? People ask me, how do I get started in web development? And, and my thing is like, all right, go to freecodecamp.com free is in the name. So like this is this is a learning path, a curriculum that you can follow to literally like learn web development. And there's lots of outside supplementary complementary resources I would probably point you to. But like, that's a huge one. That's where I point people to get started. That's where so many people have gotten their careers uh, started as web developers. And then we talked about YouTube, right? Like there's an infinite amount of videos on YouTube. One learning opportunity that I am uh, just really excited about this year and really thankful for this year is uh, a nonprofit boot camp called Launch Code. They started, they're in St. Louis, based in St. Louis, and they've done, they've facilitated these boot camps in different cities. I got to teach the one in Memphis that we did last year. And then I'm actually teaching the one uh, virtually now, remotely, uh, that's in Northwest Arkansas. So this is uh, taking in students. You start with like 150 students, which is wild. And then they, like some drop off because it's a free program, which is uh, pretty cool free program to take in people that have like, maybe some people have done a little bit of programming before, but most of these people have never done any programming before. And to be a part of that process from my perspective, like to see people learn, to see light bulbs go off, to see them struggle, but then also move past it and then have that aha moment or have that like celebratory moment of, Hey, I did something and I learned something. That's such a cool opportunity for me. And I'm so fortunate, so lucky to be a part of it. And I just enjoy it so much. I do enjoy teaching. I love he helping other people learn. Obviously, that's part of why I do YouTube videos. But this is more direct, right? Like it's with individual people or with a big group of people. And uh, Launch Code has just been really special for me over last year and then this year in particular. And the last thing I want to say is uh, getting back to content creators, like just a shout out to some of the content that I've consumed this year and paid for that have really benefited from one is the Gatsby course from West Boss. So I follow everything that West Boss does. His stuff is amazing. Uh, learning Gatsby and tying in with Sanity. That's something that I use myself. That's really cool. I also did the Tailwind course, Beginner Tailwind from Chris on Code. I'll have links to these below. And that course is amazing. It's like amazing not only for like learning Tailwind as a CSS utility based framework, but also design. He's really good at explaining like, here's why I would do this from a design perspective. Uh, Next.js course from Lee Robinson, who now works for Vercel. He's got some amazing content on Next.js. And then moving things with CSS from Jay Tompkins, who I recently just had on a stream. Those have just been really cool pieces of content that I've consumed recently. 
uh, going back to appreciating your content creators, but then also think about how many learning opportunities are out there for you to become a web developer or get better at web development. There's no shortage of that. All right, number five on here, the fifth thing you should be thankful for is just new technologies. We live, we work in a field in an area where things are constantly changing. And this is potentially one of the downsides, right? Like it's a little overwhelming for people that are getting into web development because then like there's there's JavaScript and you heard of jQuery and then there's like Ember and then you get into like React Angular View and then there's preprocessors and build tools and there's all these things. And it, it really can be overwhelming. But the benefit of this, the thing to be thankful for is that there's always options. There's always something new. So if you think about like, does this job ever get stale? Only if you let it, like it's not stale at all. There's always something to learn. And I think that's part of our responsibilities is to continue to take advantage of uh, the content that content creators put out and these other learning opportunities that are out there. And that keeps it exciting. Like I love creating YouTube videos because I get to learn new things and I have a lot of fun with that. So some of the new technologies this year, just a couple that uh, I've been excited about. Uh, Tailwind CSS is just blown up. It's become super popular. I use it on a lot of my demos and things right now. Uh, and then two that are pretty exciting, Blitz.js and Redwood.js as like frameworks built on top of React uh, that are really hopefully there to help you build full stack applications in kind of an opinionated way that'll help take care of a lot of the boilerplate code for you. But regardless of those specifics, like there's always something new, there's always something to learn. And I think that is a really exciting aspect of web development or just development in general. All right, I'm gonna throw in a bonus and this one is a little bit more personal for me. Uh, number six, something I am particularly thankful for is you, people that watch, again, content, but specifically my videos. And this has been a really fun, cool year for me, oddly enough, uh, of having a lot of growth on, on YouTube and, and having my videos get exposed to a lot more people. And seeing the comments, seeing the support, seeing the likes, those things make my day. I get extremely uh, excited uh, and just like inspired by uh, by the support that I've gotten on my YouTube channel. So if you're here watching, if you're new to the channel, uh, subscribe if you enjoy the video and want to learn more about web development. But if you're here watching, regardless, um, I enjoy having you here. I'm appreciative of you being here and watching and all the comments, all the likes, all those things I really appreciate and really keep me inspired to go. So that's my a uh, little bit of a cliche, uh, cheesy thank you, but it is sincere. So as we wrap up now, I would love to know what are your favorite things or what are your top things that you are thankful for from 2020? Before we jump into 2021, take some time to reflect. Let me know what you're thankful for in 2020 and I'll catch you in the next video.